Well, I think about three months ago, I got married. I married Josh Kepke. Um, yeah, it's been an awesome adventurous journey, that's for sure, and fun one. So, yeah, I'm getting adjusted to the Karen Kepke. I still call Pastor Karen Kepke. Karen Wong Kepke. Don't, don't forget it. <laughs> that's good. Well, thank, again, Pastor Fari, thank you for that awesome message. I feel like there's so many points in there that we can unpack. But one of the things that really uh, stood out to me is that part of encouragement. I feel like in this season, we all need that encouragement and we might feel discouraged. And uh, even the distinction between encouragement and flattery. Yeah. Um, Pastor Brad, you, I have to say thank you to you because you're a great encourager. If oh, you know stop. anything about Pastor Brad, he would uh, come along, you know, to the office and say, Karen, you are a strong and confident woman of God. <laughs> and that's always encouraged me because, uh, you know, even when I feel like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing things right or if I can do this, you always come by. And so thank you for that. You're a great example of someone who encouraged. So thinking of that, what other ways, like practically, maybe as a believer, we can be an encouragement to others? You practice it, but um, tell us a little bit of how and even how do you distinguish whether it's flattery or encouragement? Oh, man, so many great thoughts from Pastor Fari in this yeah. message. And, um, yeah, encouraging and, and flattery. They kind of sound the same, but I love what Pastor Fari said. It's for the purpose of placing courage inside of someone for them mm -hmm. to do something good. It builds them up. Mm -hmm. uh, flattery doesn't build anyone up. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, am I actually encouraging them or is this flattery? If you're building them up, it's it's encouragement. It's and a um, number, a number of years ago, I, I heard this this message from uh, Pastor Rick Warren, and he said, um, "We're all bottomless pits for encouragement, right? I know I am. Like I've never had anyone, you know." encourage me and it's like, no, stop saying nice things about me. I can't stand it. We all need <laughs> encouragement and we all crave encouragement. And that's why in 1 Thessalonians 5, mm -hmm. uh, Paul instructs us to keep encouraging people, to keep placing courage in them uh, to do more good works. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we all have a filter, right? Yeah. We all have a, have a filter for bad stuff, which is great, because sometimes we think things, and it's a good thing we filter those things out, and we say, no, that's a bad thought. I cast that, <laughs> commit to the obedience of Christ, and cast that thought away. But we have good thoughts. We think about others, but then often we don't say those good things. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why. We, we, we think and think, oh, man, that person is doing something really good. That's really neat the way they did that. And we have this filter that keeps us from placing that courage into others. And I wonder if what would happen if we removed the filter that we have for encouragement. That's so good. What, if, what happens if this week in your workplace you can remove that filter and see something like maybe God wants to use you to uh, bring an encouragement to someone even if they don't know Christ maybe that's a great connection to have that spiritual conversation that Pastor Fari mentioned. Absolutely. Speaking of spiritual conversation and conferencing, um, I was thinking about this. I mean we are always surrounded in our office by believers but I always think about how can we foster that spiritual conversation with people that perhaps don't know Christ? What would you do in order to spark something like that uh, with someone that maybe are still yet to come to know Jesus? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of ways. Um, sometimes it's easy to invite them to something like an alpha That's course right, yeah. where we can kind of do the heavy lifting for you. The videos are great. Uh, we can have that those spiritual questions as a result of a video that we watch. And mm -hmm. if you're thinking about joining Alpha, we have it this Tuesday night mm -hmm. uh, downtown and our other campuses, more info online. But sometimes it's, you don't want to get into an argument, right? That's right. And I think the very best way of sharing a, a, about Jesus and is to just tell what he has done for you, what mm -hmm. he's done in your life. And I, for instance, I can say, you know, I've actually had kind of a rough year. Mm -hmm. but I'm so thankful that I have Jesus in my life yeah. who has helped me, who's carried me through right. uh, a really challenging time for us as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, without that, uh, I don't know what I would have done. And that's just your story. That's not a, a contentious conversation. Mm -hmm. That's not getting into a theological debate. Mm -hmm. It's sharing your story. And so I think when you're authentically sharing your life with someone else, mm -hmm. uh, it, it opens them up and just say, 
uh, even the, your struggles of like what your life has been like, but what, how Jesus has made a difference is so huge. That's so huge. Yeah, and I feel like when you, when we share our experiences and things that we have personally gone through, nobody can argue with you because it's your experience. Yeah, it's your story. And then they see the, the, the fruit of that that makes cause them to ask more questions, and then there's a bridge for that. Thanks for sharing that, Pastor Brown. And now that you mentioned, you know, you had had a, a bit of a, you know, intense year, and Pastor Fari said, you know, like one of the points of helping each other grow spiritually is to look after each other. What are some of the things that you have experienced this year that you felt, wow, someone's looking after me and just, you know, it's like, give me two. <laughs> just like someone putting uh, your their hand on their shoulder and, and what that meant for you in terms of like practically what they did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, without getting into it because we don't have time, but yeah, it's been a challenging uh, season for us health-wise. We've had some health challenges in our family, and uh, I think prayer is huge. People That's praying good. for you, and you can really feel those prayers. Uh, it's, it's like Pastor Dave uh, described it this way, like you're in a cocoon of prayer that mm-hmm. you're, you're better than you should be as a result of people praying for you. That's and good. it's so key having people in my life group and the staff, church family praying for you. you. You really do feel those prayers. And then practically give people food when they're going through a hard time. It never, people will never say no to food. Mm. food if someone has a baby, give them food. If they're <laughs> going through a hard time, give them food. Because when you're going through a hard time, the last thing you want to do is cook for some reason. <laughs> it's a good, very practical way to do that. I, and I see. I think even that action means uh, encouragement, absolutely. right? Cause or I'm, a gift card or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like I'm here with you. I might not, you know, like uh, relate completely, but I'm here with you and I'm supporting you. And that's what encouragement is all about. Is looking at actually, I'm geeking. I love studying the word encouragement uh, means to give courage, but also in the Greek word it means to give support. And so I feel like in, in our walk with God, not only we give, give support or give words of encouragement, but we can give support with action as well. Hey, we have just a few more seconds to go. Yeah. Uh, one last question is like we all talked about and we heard about being challenged. I think that's very uncomfortable. To me, the word challenge is like <gasps> it's in your face. Right. <laughs> but yet there's so much growth that can happen when someone challenges you. Can you tell us who or what God has used in your life to challenge you in your growing closer to him. Oh, man, so many people. I mean, staff, you know, yeah. Pastor David mm-hmm. Cheryl, for sure, those are given. Uh, but I think, personally, my, my wife, you know, I've been married for 17 years, so I've had lots of opportunities for sharpening. Woo-hoo, Rebecca Bergman. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, there's this book by um, a guy named Gary Thomas. He wrote this book called Sacred Marriage, and the, the thesis of the book is how Marriage is, is one of the very best places where we experience the sanctification that Pastor Fari was talking about. That's we good. have so many opportunities to grow the fruit of the Spirit in marriage, right? Yeah. You, you think you're a patient person, and then you get married, you're like, oh, maybe I'm not so patient. That's you true. get married, and you're like, maybe I am a little bit selfish. Maybe I do like things a certain way. And you have the opportunity to grow the fruit of the Spirit. It can be an amazing incubator for yeah. godliness and holiness if it's done God's way, right? When you That's put God right. first in your marriage, there is such power how we are sanctified even through the idea of marriage, which is God-ordained. Uh, Love how you put that. I feel like God puts us through a growth process that only can happen when we are in relationship in a life group or marriage or with friendship. And that's how God designed us to grow. Absolutely. So with that said, uh, I know we are over, over time. (laughs) So it's so good to be with you all and encourage you to find someone to encourage this week. Give them a word of encouragement. Do something for them that God wants to use you to be a link in their journey to go come to know Jesus. So uh, with that said, goodbye. We love you guys and hope to see you next week. See ya.